Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today I've got five fall farmhouse DIYs using Dollar Tree products. If this is your first time here, welcome. And I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. And now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're going to be using a plastic toolbox, some fall colored leaf stems and some floral foam, a package of the metal words and we're using thankful, and then some Waverly chalk paint in ink and in white. And so the first thing I did was just painted my toolbox and you could spray this, but I decided just to go ahead and use my chalk paint because the last time I painted with my spray paint, it didn't come out too well. So I didn't want to take any chances because this was the only one I had. So I'm just going to get all the nooks and crannies and paint it completely white, including the bottom. I didn't paint the inside because you're not going to see that too much. So then I did paint the front latch and the handle in the Waverly chalk paint in ink. And I'm going to give that two coats. And then on my thankful sign, I'm going to paint that in the ink as well. And this will take a couple of coats also just to get a nice coverage and completely solid. So the next thing I'm going to do is mark out where my word's going to go. You could, again, hot glue this onto the front of the toolbox, but I really want this to stay in place. And in our hot summers, it seems that my hot glue alone is kind of letting go, even if I do add the E6000. So I'm going to just go ahead and wire this. And I just made two little holes using a little, I don't know, poker, and then made those holes and stuck my wire into the box making sure that it was nice and tight and then I'm just going to twist it in the back to make it stay in place. So now I'm going to hot glue some floral foam to the bottom of my box and then I'm going to start adding my fall colored leaf stems into the front and I'm going to kind of push them in at an angle because we're going to kind of close the lid and they'll just be poking out and overflowing. So now you can totally leave it the way it is and if you're not a bow person just feel free to skip this part but I wanted to get a little bit of buffalo check in there and there was a little hole right at the top next to the little latch so it was looking like I should put something in it and so I just made a sweet little bow and I used a chenille stem to wrap around that and twist in the back and then dovetailed the edges and then popped it in that hole twisted it up and it was all done. And here's how it turned out and I think this is so sweet and you saw how easy this was. If you did leave the bow off you would be able to see the lid a little bit better which I think is what is so cute about this but either way you don't have to be a flower arranger by any means because you can just throw those in there. You saw me just stick them into the foam and it was done. And so I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. For our next project, we're going to be using another assortment of fall leaves, some jute twine, and some twigs that I got from outside, some Waverly chalk paint in plaster, truffle, and maize. And all I did was cut off a bunch of these leaves, and some of them are kind of wrinkly, and I'll address that in a second. But I'm just going to get everything off of the vines and off of the stems, and I have a couple of different ones in there, and I just got this nice, big, beautiful pile of leaves. So to make those flat, I used 
my mom's <laughs> flat iron and just flattened them out if they were bent or folded and so that they would be nice and straight. You do have to watch out for the plastic that is the little veins of the leaves because it will melt onto the flat iron. Sorry, mom. I did clean it up though. While it's still hot, you can wipe it off with a towel. So anyway, now I'm going to take my chalk paint and I'm just kind of going with different colors and different shades of the browns and in some of them I'll put a little bit of yellow and it's okay if there's a little bit of the colors showing through from the reds or the underneath colors of the leaves themselves but for the most part I want these to be in shades of browns and taupes and off-whites and just a beautiful array of fall leaves. So now I'm going to take my branches and cut off all of the parts that have live leaves on them and I want to leave the twigs that are coming out from the main branches so that I can attach my leaves to those pieces. And I'm just going to take some hot glue, put it on the back of the leaves and then attach them carefully so that I don't burn myself and then make it into a complete branch with different leaves growing off of it. They're going to go in all different directions. So if you have some that have some hot glue showing, you can just cover those up with other leaves. And I did try to do some of the larger ones toward the bottom and then making them a little bit smaller towards the top. So now I'm going to take a glass vase from Dollar Tree, an empty ribbon spool, some floral foam, and some rubber wood grain shelf liner. And I'm going to take my floral foam and cut that down into a circle that'll fit into the bottom of my vase. And then I'm going to take my spool and put that on top of that. And because you can still see that top, I'm going to take the little rim off and paint that with my truffle brown paint. And I'm just going to give that one coat and I think it kind of makes it look a little bit like dirt but even if you can't see it it's there if you look over so it's a great way to use your empty spools and I like that it has the little hole inside so your twigs will stand straight up. So now I'm going to take my shelf liner and cut that down to the circumference of the vase and then I'm going to measure where it will end at the bottom. And then the shelf liner has a pattern in it and they're straight lines so you can actually cut that straight line. And because it is a rubbery material, you don't even have to fold it over to make a clean edge. It's just automatically a clean edge. So I use my hot glue to glue it down and then wrap it all the way around and glue it on top of that. And then I did end up using some of the Dollar Tree like linen looking ribbon in the burlap color just to give it a little more cuteness. And here it is all finished and I just love how this turned out. I think it's so soft and very autumn looking. You could do this same project and use the regular colors that come on the leaves already if you're doing the oranges and that color palette. Either way, it's still going to be a big statement and super cutie patootie and I love it and I hope you guys like it too. For our next project, we're going to be using a tall scarecrow sign, some raffia, some white string, some chalk paint in ink, and a white paint pen. And all I did was take off the happy fall sign from what's going to be the back side, and then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink to paint the front side. Well, this is the front side now. 
of my sign including the sides if you were going to use this or do this yourself i'm a firm believer in painting the back sides but because i do so many crafts i have to ration my supplies so that's the only reason i didn't paint the back so now i'm going to use my heat gun to speed up the drying process and then i'm going to go in with some sandpaper and sand down those edges so it gives it a nice rustic finish and then I'm gonna take my white string and then wrap it long ways on my sign and tie a knot in the back. And I want one side to be more toward the left and then the bottom side to be more toward the right. So it should be crookedy and so kind of leaning. And then I'm gonna start wrapping my string and I'm gonna go on the right side of the top and the left side of the bottom, if that makes sense. So it's getting wider at the top and the bottom and it's overlapping in the middle. And then when you finish up, you'll tie it again on the back in a knot. Now we're gonna do it the other way and I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but I'm just making a cross that's kind of leaning towards the side. So I'll do the same thing with the crossbar and get that wrapped around as well. So now I'm going to take my white paint pen and I'm just going to write Matthew 13, 31 through 39. And I'm going to do it in just freehand cursive writing. And I'm just going to keep going in and out wherever the cross is. I'll just skip right there and go around it. If I don't have a word that will fit all the way, I'm just going to stop it and then move on to the next line. And I'm going to do this all the way down and just make it super cutie patootie as you have the word of God going through the sign of the cross. And anytime I'm looking for a scripture that has to do with a certain season, I just Google it. And so, for example, I just put in scriptures about the harvest. And so this was one that came up and it says, He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And it was so perfect because it all completely fit exactly on my sign. And then you saw I just added a little wooden pumpkin, and I think this turned out so precious and beautiful, and it was so simple. And I think the handwriting just being plain and not fancy or anything is what makes it so pretty. So I love how this turned out, and I hope you like it too.
So I wanted to share with you guys this sweet perky prize I just recently got and this is from Jean Dunn in Narrows, Virginia and she calls this the Windy Fairy Doll and it is so stinking cute. You guys should see it in real life. I wish my legs were that skinny but it comes with a buffalo check bow, some long dark hair, sorry I have paint on my thumb, and my favorite part of all are these earrings that I've had since the 80s some bedazzled leaf wings and it's just so stinking precious and cute the sweet little chair and then of course a jute twine wrapped basket with some buffalo check and so I just wanted to share that with you and say thank you to Jean Dunn for being so sweet so for our next project we're gonna be using an old white sheet some white string a white chalk marker a pumpkin, some raffia, some chalk paint in plaster, and in truffle. And so the first thing I did was just cut my sheet down and I'm gonna rip some strips. That's hard to say. I'm gonna rip some strips about two inches wide and then I'm gonna cut them down to about four or five inches each. And you get faster because I started folding them over and then just cutting it in one snip. So it was a lot easier to do than doing them individually. And this is a Cal King flat sheet, so it ended up taking about half. So now I'm going to start tying these onto my 12 inch wreath form. And there's four crossbars on this, so if you get the larger one, which is 14 inches, I believe, it will only have three of those crossbars. So about 17 hours later, after I was all done, I had this beautiful wreath and I was so in love with this. So now I'm going to take my little pumpkin sign and pull it off of the stand and get all the little bits off of this. And I always keep my little parts in case I need that for another project. And then I'm going to take my sticker off of the back and then this is the side that we're going to paint. But I did take off the burlap from what will be the back just in case any of it shows. It doesn't show so you really don't even need to do this. So now I'm going to take my chalk paint in plaster and I'm going to paint the sides and the front which is the back and then get that all nice and covered and then I'm going to go back in with my truffle and make the lines of my pumpkin. So to do that I just kind of start off with some pretty dark lines and then I'll go back in and shade it in and get it all nicely blended and just meet with that sideways eyeball in the middle of the pumpkin and you kind of want to go with the bumpity bumps at the bottom of the pumpkin but this one didn't have it because it was sitting inside of a sign so you just had to do it on your own. And then on my stem I painted that with the truffle as well. So once I got my pumpkin all painted and it's all nice and dry, I'm going to take some raffia and just fold it over a few times to get it all nice and messy but resembling a bow. And then I'll take a piece of jute twine and tie that in the middle and then I'm going to fluff it out and then attach it to the stem of my pumpkin. And I just wrapped that around so that it would meet in the front and then I'll tie it off and let those hang. And those will kind of be the little tendrils of the pumpkin. And so you can actually take your fingers and wind those pieces of jute twine in a little coil and they kind of hold their shape and stay a little curly cute. So then I'm going to take my white paint pen and I'm just going to write welcome to our patch and I'm going to use the downstroke method where you make the lines of the downstroke parts of your letters a little bit wider than the rest of the word and I added a couple of lines on the sides of two hour and I do have another video that kind of is a semi writing tutorial and gives you a little more detail, but it's pretty much all here. You just go a little bit thicker on those downward strokes. And a lot of you guys say that you like to see me do this writing. And so I do leave it in here and it's a little bit longer than normal, but I hope that's okay. <laughs>
So originally I was just going to hot glue this right to the wreath, but I loved it so much I wanted to be able to change out the plaque for the seasons so I can use it for Christmas or Easter or winter or whatever. So instead I just put a piece of string with some hot glue and then took some of that sheet and glued that down. For some reason I was thinking about getting my brows waxed right here. But anyway, this way I can just tie it onto the wreath and then change it out for the seasons. So I'll just wrap it around and then tie it in the back and then it's all done. And here's how it turned out and I absolutely love this. I love all the textures and the touchy-feely goodness that you can see with the sheets and being raw on the edges and I just love everything about this wreath, especially the simplicity of it. It's just clean and cool and I don't know, I just it makes my heart happy. So I love how this turned out and I hope you guys like it too. For our final project, we're going to be using three more of those scarecrow signs, three styrofoam pumpkins, some ribbon, a gather sign, a vine wreath, two packs of the rulers, and some eucalyptus leaves. And I get those from Walmart for 97 cents a bunch. And so I'm going to do the same thing with my boards and I'm going to get those all ready to paint and I have my little helper cadence with me. And so the things I'm going to paint are the boards and my sticks, but I first have to cut them down to make everything fit together. So I'm going to take the little measuring parts off of the wooden rulers and I'm also going to be painting my pumpkins. So I'll get those ready and set those aside. So. I want this to look like a little fence and so I'm going to dog ear the corners of my boards and then using my rulers I'm going to make a crossbar at the top and at the bottom and so because they don't go all the way across I have to measure and cut off those holes and I want them to overlap just a little bit. So I went outside and used my miter saw and Cadence is the one doing the filming here and so it's a little lower than usual. <laughs> but you could do this with a utility knife and then just snap off the wood. But my miter saw is so much easier and quicker it's just easier for me to do it this way. So now I'm going to take my white chalk paint and paint the sides and on the fronts of my fence and once I get them all painted I'm going to go in with some sandpaper and do some distressing all the way around and on top. I do end up taking it outside and using my rotary sander just because it was a little bit easier and again quicker for me and I'm going to do the same thing with my ruler pieces. So now I'm going to paint my pumpkins and I pull off the stems of all of them and what I'm going to do in greens, one will be in whites and then one will be in oranges. And if they're not all ready, just to make it easier to paint them, I'm going to put them on a skewer and then I'm going to get a little twig from outside and use those as the stems for my pumpkins. So now I'm going to take my gather sign outside and I'm going to be using some black matte 
Krylon spray paint and I just spray painted it black and I did it from both sides because there's lots of nooks and crannies in there and you wanna be sure to get it covered. I should have actually sanded it before I painted it black because there were some parts that were showing, I think from the glue of what the material's made up of. So I went in to sand it afterwards and that wasn't the look I was going for, but it's still cutie patootie, so either way you go is fine. So now I'm gonna put my fence together and I'm using my rulers to separate them so they'll be nice and even. And then I'll use some E6000 and hot glue to place my crossbars, one at the bottom and one at the top. So now I'm going to take my grapevine wreath and I just took the jute twine off of it. I did leave some of it on so that it still stays together, but this way I'm able to maneuver my stems in and out without having to go through those jute twine pieces. So now I'm going to take my stems and cut these apart. And these are the Walmart eucalyptus and I like them more on a wreath than I do in a vase or anything because I feel like the leaves are upside down for some reason. And so using them this way just kind of camouflages that for me. So I just cut those apart with my wire cutters and then I'm just gonna start sticking them into that grapevine wreath and then I'll go all the way around. And I like the look of when it's kind of sticking out, but I need this to kind of be all compact. So I'm gonna go in with my floral wire and I'm gonna wrap it all the way around the entire thing and wherever the wires showing I'm just gonna cover that up with those leaves so that you can't see it and this way it'll just kind of be a little bit smaller because my board's not too terribly big so I wanted to make it a little bit smaller so that you could see the gather sign and the crossbars and you can tell that it's a little fence So originally I had planned to use the buffalo check for the ribbon on my wreath to hang it from, but I really wanted to use this ticking fabric that I've had forever. So I decided to use this instead and I'm just gonna cut a strip off of the fabric and fold the sides in and then I'm gonna use my iron to get those down and then I'll go back in with some fabric tack and make them all nice and secure. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the wreath and then attach it to the board with my hot glue and then wrap it around to the back. And then I'm gonna put my gather sign at the bottom and then using my E6000 and hot glue, I'll get that secured as well. So now to put my pumpkins on, I'm gonna take a knife and just cut off the little backs of the pumpkins and so they'll have a flat back. And then I'm gonna be gluing those directly to the board and it'll look like it's on the wreath, but I'll just kind of stagger them and put one on top of the two. I had originally dressed these little guys up with some jute twine and some tendrils out of wire and so forth, but it just got too busy so I decided to just leave them blank and I liked it kind of plain like that. So since I had a little bit of fabric left over, I decided to make a sweet little bow and put that at the top on the holder. And so I just made a single loop on each side and then took a chenille stem and wrapped it around and twisted it in the back. And then I'm gonna take that leftover, it was just enough, I'm gonna fold it in half long ways and make the middle part of that bow and then I'll hot glue that together so that it's all nice and clean. And then I'll hot glue that to my ribbon hanger.
and here it is all finished and I love how this turned out and this would have been super cutie patootie even with the buffalo check ribbon as well but I just really wanted to use this fabric in something so I thought this was the perfect project to do that and so I really like interchangeable items that I can change for the seasons so during Christmas I could put like three little Christmas trees where the pumpkins are here and it's still super cute and goes with the theme of whatever the season is so anyway, I love how this turned out and I hope you guys like it too. For some reason, my gather sign looks more scratched up than it really is. So I don't know why that is, but I guess it's the lighting. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed these projects. And if you did, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. I appreciate everyone who takes the time to make a comment and all your sweet compliments. If you aren't already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!